Welcome to Baycats Banter, the official podcast of the Barry Baycats. So glad to have you here listening to the season three premiere with Josh Matlow, Baycats president, general manager, and field manager. Josh, how's it going? Not too bad. Yourself, Sam? I'm doing great. I miss uh, Baycats baseball, but this is uh, one thing that's going to keep that from affecting me too much. Yeah, just seven, seven months to go, Sam, and counting. <laughs> yeah, it should it should be it should be a fun season up ahead. Uh, where Josh is on here to talk to us about the 2023 season, what's new with the Baycats, and his expectations for 2024. So, we'll start off by asking you, what were your favorite uh, favorite moments from the past 2023 season? Well, there was a lot. Obviously, uh, you know, we didn't. Uh... We didn't get our end goal of, of winning a championship, but we had a, a lot of really good moments and a lot of positivity and um, a lot to grow from. Um, one that really stuck out to me was uh, Ryan Rio uh, breaking the uh, Bay Cats uh, RBI uh, record. Um, I was able to, uh, you know, sign his ball and and, and send a little message. And um, that was close to my heart because uh, Ryan's, uh, you know, been there from day one with me. And uh, I was really happy to see that. Definitely a great moment. We we also had uh, Kenise Ijo, who broke the Baycat single season stolen base record with 26. Baycats with a amazing playoff run, obviously just falling short. Uh, but honestly, just a season that you could build off of. What what were some things you, you would like to actually build off of from last season to hopefully get your end goal this, uh, this upcoming year? Yeah, the uh, the core will be back. Um, that's the good news. Uh, we signed a, a few of the the regulars, and we're just going to build off that. I think we needed some more pitching um, with the playoffs uh, squished together. Um, obviously, you needed more pitching, and it favored well in, in the finals there because they had a, a few more starters and a few more arms, uh, and it did add up uh, to you know towards the end. But uh, we're going to add some more pitching, um, a little more firepower, um, and uh, we're going to work on our bullpen as well. Yeah, I mean, you can ne- you can never have too much pitching, and that's uh, definitely the case with the Bay Cats last year. Obviously, uh, they had the firepower of the lineup, but definitely some pitching can help them out. Um, just a couple of uh, signings, as as Josh mentioned, we have been announcing signings all throughout, uh, starting October thirty uh, October twenty third, which was the Monday we announced Ryan Rio, and more followed um who who of the first week of signings was your favorite well obviously we had ryan rio we had frank garces for hayden jaco adam odd and roy sando obviously ryan rio and frank garces are kind of the two faces of the team garces being on the pitching side and rio being on the offense but who out of like odd jaco and ando are you most excited to get back it's uh it's kind of like having kids you love it you know you love them Equally, but differently. Um, obviously, yeah, I love them all, and I'm really happy to have them all back. And um, it just says a lot about what we're what we're doing here uh, for them to want to come back and eager, eagerly sign, um, you know, as soon as they possibly can. Um, but that helps us to build around them. Um, obviously, Ryan on the offensive side of thing, um, Ando and Odd uh, are huge. Jaco is a is a leader. Um, so so again, love them all equally, differently. Um, they all are a big piece to our puzzle. Uh, and Frank bolsters the starting lineup. He's our ace, no questions. Um, he wants to be there. He wants the ball, um, you know, and and hopefully, you know, the guys we bring in this year, uh, pitching wise, can um, it could be infectious on on them. Uh, and he he sets he sets a bar and a standard, um, you know, for starting pitchers or for for just pitchers in general. Um, as does Brad Grieveson, right? Um, they have expectations and and leadership. So hopefully, uh, that'll reflect on on the pitching we bring in this year. Yeah, and Brad, definitely someone we'd like to get on the show to talk a little bit more about the pitching. Uh, speaking about the pitching, though, obviously you mentioned Frank Garces. What, what did it mean for to you to get those starts from him down the stretch? Obviously, he had the complete game shutout against Welland. He had a couple like enormous playoffs uh, starts and outings to get you guys all the way to the finals. Just what yeah. did it mean for the atmosphere in the team? I mean, it just, it builds our confidence too, knowing that Frank's going to be on the mound. Um, you know, it, it goes back to the finals. We were one pitch away from going up 3-1 and at worst, even if it did go seven, uh, they have to face Frank again. So um, knowing that Frank's on the mound, um, 
I think a lot of uh, a lot of the guys know that it's a winnable game automatically. Um, it gives us that chance every three games in the regular season and almost every other game in the playoffs. Um, just depends on the schedule, obviously. But uh, that's a huge, huge um, piece to our puzzle. Um, he was a, uh, obviously one of the, the main um, players that I needed to sign immediately, uh, get it back, and then kind of build around. So uh, we're happy to have him back. We're happy to have Rio back. We're happy to have the core back. Um, a lot of a lot of um, guys have have like I said been eager to sign, um, and I'm getting a lot of attention from elsewhere as well um, that want to join. Um, they like what we're doing, and they're excited about you know what we could be for the next few years. So um, you know I said this on day one that we're going to be competitive for years, and and I really hope it it sticks to that. It's definitely looking like that. You also mentioned guys like Hayden Jaco and Adam Odd. Hayden, J- Hayden Jaco, obviously, with his first year in London, they won a uh, won an IBL championship. He obviously winning IBL Rookie of the Year. How, how much did he mean to the clubhouse, especially down the stretch and into the postseason? Yeah, he's a uh, he's a leader on and off the field. Um, again, it, it's setting that bar, you know, you know, in the clubhouse or or on the field. Um, to have an expectation to give 100% every time. Um, his, his the little things that he does, the uh, his baseball IQ, his attention to detail, it, it's incredible. And and it's um, as a manager, it's great to see. It's uh, great to see him bring it 100% of the time. Uh, he's at the ballpark, but again, it's infectious to the other players. So guys see that, guys pick up on that, and they want to do it as well. And then they start contributing in their own way too. And then you have all these pieces contributing and and. Look what it did this year, you know, brought us right to the second last game of the year um, as far as we could have gone. And again, we were could have been we're a pitch away from up three one. And, and who knows what that would have looked like. But um, like I said, it's an infectious quality um, on and off the field. He's a great human being. Um, he's when he's when he's there, he's completely engaged. And as a manager and, and, and a, you know, the president, GM it, it, on every level, um, that's exactly the type of guy that we want and, and the type of guy we want to build around. So we're, we're excited to have him back. Um, like I said, it's we didn't know what we had, you know, um, the, the finals hangover, we'll call it. We didn't know what we were doing or who we had coming back. We didn't want to talk about it. And then uh, you flip the page and, you know, here we are. Let's let's go get it. So uh, we're excited to get started, but uh, it couldn't it couldn't come soon enough this season. And you mentioned us going all the way to game six, the maximum amount of home games this year for the Bay Cats from what we were seated. Um, just what did the fans mean? And I'll go and I'll go to uh game I think it was game three against the or game two rather against the Kitchener Panthers in game or round two. You guys were down a couple, the fans just started getting into it, and the, it seemed like the crowd just rallied you guys back into that game. Well, I guess get me getting tossed help too. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, I was gonna get to that. That definitely fires up a crowd. And yeah. we spoke to you after the game, and yeah, the the ejection, uh, the crowd just getting into every pitch. That like, what wh- what was that doing for the energy on the players? So, so uh, I just want it known and stated that uh, I've been thrown out twice now, both when we were behind. Uh, and we're 2-0 and from that. So I don't know if the guys rally behind it or the crowd or what it was or a combination of both. Um, but I had the pleasure of actually joining the crowd. You know, when I was thrown out, I leave the bench. And um, I, I did not realize. And, and you know, you got to remember that we're on the field. So we can only hear so much or we're locked into the game. You didn't. I don't realize how crazy it was and how much the fans were into it. And it was actually a pleasure and a completely different viewpoint for me to be a part of. And I became a fan, right? So I was cheering with the fans and, and high-fiving everyone. And uh, it was pretty, pretty uh, magical and, and electric. And I was just, I was so, um, obviously I was happy we came back and won it, but I was happy to be a part of that uh, on the other side of the, of the fence. And uh, it was awesome to see. And I, I just thank the fans for giving me that uh, the memory and, and, and just being so engaged and, and excited about Bay Cats baseball. Yeah, and we'll get to the fans in a little bit because we might we might have some things to touch on that we've started to announce uh, during the off season so far. But we'll we'll go to twenty twenty four now. Uh, obviously, that season is still a ways away. Seven months, as you mentioned, I had to wait. Darn it! Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know what? What are what are some things you you would like to see from the team in 2024 we mentioned some things we have to you guys have to build on pitching and just building chemistry with the new guys but 
What what will be your kind of signs of success early on? Yeah, I think that uh, you know we we had um it took us some time in some games to get the energy going and and the runs on the board. Uh, I like to be that team that that gets up early and kind of strangle holds the game, um, and then we just uh, put the foot on the gas kind of thing. And um, I don't want to put the I think we we got up a few times and and again we had a great year we we had a great record. Um, but there's a lot of games that we could have won as well. Uh, and and the record could have even been better. Um, you know, you get up early and you put a stranglehold on the game um, or you get up late and hold, you know. So um, I just felt like, you know, we even score sometimes in the fourth or fifth inning and the energy wasn't high early. And, um, you know, that's that's nobody's fault but our own, um, you know. But uh, I just want to be that team that, you know, especially especially at home, we had a really good home record. Um, but if we get up early with, you know, good pitching on the mound, it's going to be very hard to beat us uh, in our park. Definitely will be, especially with uh, some of the new things we're planning for the fans next year. Um, speaking of that, uh, we had the uh, we're starting to announce the new merch, will be, which will be available soon. And obviously a couple a couple more things that we won't mention yet, but. Uh, starting with the merch, how are you, how excited are you to not only get new merch out, but also the, the roll cat sweaters that we've seen the players and the coaches wear? those are finally going to be coming out. Yeah. So we've been asked about that a lot. We, uh, for the last couple of years, we w- worn the roll cats hoodies, uh, the players have, you know, on the cold nights and everybody who's wanted that we made it exclusive to the players. So if we saw someone walking around with it, we knew that it was either a girlfriend or wife. Of, of the players um, but this year we're going to make it available um, for the public um, we also have some really cool new designs thanks to you Sam uh, <laughs> for putting in some efforts and uh, kind of bringing our vision to life um, and we, um, we we've increased uh, you know our merch and we've taken a lot of feedback as well we had a, a great line of merch last year but I think we've really elevated it this year uh, we've added some accessories some uh, souvenirs and stuff like that that you know we'll explain later but, um, you know, it's, it's really for the fans and, and um, to see the fans wearing our stuff around, you know, around town, never mind at the ballpark. Uh, it's really cool to see. Look at your hat. You know, I know how comfortable that one is. I own one, too. But uh, little things like that, it adds up. We appreciate, you know, representing and um, we're trying to listen to the fans. We try to get as much feedback as possible. Um, but we do have that merch, um, a little merch section there um, that we'd like to increase and, and uh, bring some more fun stuff to. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned uh, fans wearing it around. Uh, just talking about some of the things because we, we, everyone, all the Baycats fans know that the team does a lot of work in the community during the off season and during the season as well. What what uh, events can you tell Baycats fans that they can look forward to during the off season? Yeah, last year we did uh, for the first time actually, I think ever I, we might have done it once many many years ago, the Santa Claus Parade. Uh, we're going to be doing that on November 18th. That's coming up again. Uh, we're excited to partner with uh, Classic Towing. They're our partners and sponsors. Um, they'll be driving us. Uh, we'll have the mascot there and a bunch of the boys. Um, but we love that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll also be doing the accessible um, trick-or-treat for Halloween uh, this coming weekend. Um, and it just gives an opportunity, like I said, to get out in the community, uh, meet some people, shake some hands, high-five some people. Um, and try to keep them engaged and excited about Baycats baseball, even though we're only seven months away. No, it's it's okay. Seven months. It's less than a year. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, the the off season events. Uh, obviously, the Christmas parade will be very popular. We'll we'll get the the mascot and some of the players. You'll obviously be there. Uh, and just keep an eye out for uh our on our socials because we'll be updating on the merch and different events and ways that you the the fans can get involved but uh yeah we we do have some things that are in the works but uh do you want to give them any hints well we're also going to be uh at the mall for two weeks uh, georgia ball last year we did it for a week and uh it just we did <laughs> we ran out of stuff so uh we're going to be uh locked and loaded and we'll be there for two weeks in december just keep an eye on social media uh we've also committed to the women's show um, at the Bradford Greenhouses in January. We're going to do the Barry Home Show. So we're going to try and be out there, out and about for, you know, uh, merchandise. The camps will be on sale soon. Um, and uh, obviously tickets. 
Yeah, season tickets uh, at the time you're watching, they they could be out right now. So keep an eye out on our website, berrybaycats.com, and our social media platforms for uh, updates on that. You, uh, you fans can get your season tickets for the upcoming season. The schedules have not been released yet for the season. Those will be released down the road. But again, keep an eye out on our social media for updates on that. So... That kind of uh, concludes the questions for today, Josh. Anything else you want to add and want to say to the fans? No, I just wanted to thank them for a great season last year. We didn't really get that public opportunity um, to thank you guys for coming out supporting. Um, it means the world to myself. It means the world to the organization. The players love it. Um, we saw an increase, obviously, in attendance last year. Um, you know, obviously, going deep in the playoffs definitely helps. Uh, but like I said, we're, we're hoping to build a, a, a team for longevity and have a, um, a great team on the field, a great product on the field um, so that we're not just winning off the field. We're winning on the field now, too. Uh, we're not rebuilding anymore. Um, that was a few, I don't want to say painful years, but a few years that we ha- was necessary. Um, but we really uh, built quite the core and we're really excited about you know the players. And I know the fans have given feedback and the volunteers, too, of how great these guys are and um, like I said, not just great baseball players, but great human beings that uh, want to be a part of the community um, and really be a part of everything that we're we're kind of accomplishing. Yeah, and if any of you watching want to be a Baycats volunteer, just head to our website and you can apply to be a Baycats volunteer for next year, either in media or in game day uh, assignments. But uh, yeah, we'd love to have you. We also want to hear your feedback on the show. Who do you want to see next? Obviously, we had Josh Matlow. We want to get some more of the players on for you guys to hear from. So let us know either in the comments on social media. And yeah, we, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in to season three, episode one of Baycats Banter. And we'll see you next time.